Hey guys, welcome back to another Redstone video. So we continue our 1.19 deep dog experimental snapshot journey. After we built the automatic spider spawner XP farm, I went for the big one and made an automatic enderman farm based uh, XP farm. So automatic in a sense that the player doesn't need to do anything. Of course, they need to be present for the enderman to spawn. We can't get around this, um, but apart from that, everything is done fully automatic and the player doesn't need to interact with the farm, just need to be present. Okay, so let's check it out. You can already see the XP incoming, it's working pretty fine. But there's actually a lot of work that went into this, spent about 8 hours to actually finish this design. Okay, so let's check it out. So maybe start from the beginning. Of course, we got an enderman farm here, so just a big platform. I actually built it at Y45 and um, yeah, didn't use any pointed dripstone because it's not really necessary. You can always make the spawning platform a little bit larger. All right, so the enderman rush towards the endermite, hold down a drop shoot, and land here on top of the skulk blocks next to the skulk catalyst. All right, so the next thing you have is actually pretty cool tech. Uh, we have a yeah, one-directional skulk block line to transport the charges up to the basalt generator. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You can actually uh, basically direct where those bubbles or charges are going to. And yeah, here they would convert the basalt blocks into skulk. So I'm actually using a basalt generator because those blocks can be converted like normal smooth stone. But it's actually a little bit simpler to make a basalt generator. You don't need to deal with any water. You can just uh, push the blue ice, the sticky piston here, and every 30 ticks you can push out the basalt blocks. Okay, I had to be careful uh, to uh, prevent any of the skulk weights from spreading. First time I actually ran this farm, it stopped because the soul soil at the bottom actually also got converted into skulk. But apart from that, yeah, it's working pretty well. Unfortunately, not all of the basalt blocks are getting converted. I think we're still pushing this a little bit too fast. But yeah, in order to push this a bit slower, I would basically need to split it up and merge it again. Instead of every maybe pushing every 30 ticks, every 60 ticks might be a little bit better, but it would get even more complicated. And we're almost at max XP anyway, so the maximum you can get of this type of farm is 36,000 XP per hour, because all of those XP balls will only hold one XP. So every block that is broken drops one XP ball, gives you one XP, and you can only pick up 10 every second. That's why we have this 36k limit. Yeah, but apart from that, it's working pretty great. So, yeah, we're pushing the blocks up. And then I had to add a little bit of a yeah, piston logic here. To convert this yeah, uh, nine white block stream into something that fits nicely in the wizard cage. So, I don't think I need to show it all. But it's basically just blocks being pushed around and then pushed into the wizard cage. I can quickly remove this here. You can see every 30 ticks blocks are arriving and are getting broken by the wizard. Actually, I tried to make this farm realistic, so I was using the bedrock uh, to trap the wizard. You couldn't get the reinforced deep slate in the end dimension right now, of course, because you can't push a block through a portal. And uh, yeah, place the bedrock at around the height where you can usually find the gateways. Okay, I trapped the wizard in there. And he's targeting a villager. So not 100% sure if this wizard cage is really reliable, but my testing so far worked pretty well. Okay, we're actually using the snowballs here. Every 30 ticks to reliably damage the wizard. So I couldn't use a snow golem because it would be just unreliable and then we would have issues with this setup. We really need to do it every 30 ticks precisely. Okay, technically of course, so you would never run out of snowballs. You could uh, add an automatic uh, snow farm, so you could use TNT duping to blow up snow layers, collect the uh, yeah, snowballs this way, but I think this is not really the scope of the farm right now. It was just, yeah, still it's experimental snapshot, just a proof of concept, and I still had a lot of fun making this. So there's one more thing I wanted to talk about because it actually gave me quite a headache for a while. 
Yeah, it's the fact that on top of the Skulk blocks, if there's charge left, um, the Skulk sensor or Skulk shrieker blocks can generate. And as you can see here, in case we're pushing blocks around with pistons, there's definitely something that would be hard to prevent. You could maybe keep the piston extended and only retract it the right moment if a block is getting pushed in. Um, but it might be quite a lot of effort. But there's actually a way to prevent here the generation of the Skulk sensor blocks. So I can show it real quick over here. So yeah, that, that's basically the issue we're having. Those blocks are also not movable in case you would try to push them with a piston. It's also a bit of a problem if they generate next to the piston. So then you could activate them and they're not movable. So it would be quite a pain to deal with them. But yeah, the way around is if there's three of those Skulk sensor blocks, I think within five blocks roughly, then no new blocks would generate. This works pretty well. But that's why there's a lot of Skulk sensors here on the side, wherever yeah, there's air on top of the Skulk blocks for a moment. Of assault in this case. But yeah, there's also skulk blocks incoming. Sensors here on the side would prevent that. Okay. Yeah, I also tried around it a little bit. I'm gonna quickly turn off this farm and show you some of the logic here with those one way systems. Yeah, this is pretty nice with those one-way systems. You can also split up or basically make a randomizer out of it where the charge is going. So you just need to place the stairs like this. Uh, so the idea is that you basically have a, a complete side covering um, the underside here of the skulk block so it couldn't spread back. Also there's a, a full side of the block here, but the skulk charge can uh, go this way because it's not fully covered here on the side. That's why we're using those stairs here. Also wondering what's the maximum range or how far you can transport this charge. The farm is safely turned off. Okay, then we can actually go out real quick. So this is definitely working for hundreds of blocks. Just at some point you would actually unload the Skulk Catalyst block and then the charge is gone. So at the very end here. Uh, now we actually unloaded the Skulk Catalyst block, but if we move back, they would also reappear again. But in case you would leave the game, um, then the charge is lost, so it's not saved if you actually leave the game. So far I have to say those Skulk mechanics are a lot of fun to play around with. It's also sometimes a bit challenging, not completely trivial to make the farms, so I'm having a lot of fun right now. And I also got a couple more ideas, so there will be a couple more videos this week for sure on this topic. Right, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.